Hello and welcome back to another bespoke unit fragrance review. In this video, we shall be reviewing Burberry Brit Rhythm. As with every fragrance review, we'll be using the bespoke unit fragrance formula, which is, this one's a digital version that I already filled out for a written review, but you can download a blank version so you can make your own reviews at home. Just check the link in the description to find out more. So Burberry Brick Rhythm is a lesser known fragrance that was released by the British luxury brand back in 2011. It's uh, an accessible fragrance, it's uh, cheaper than some of the others offered by Burberry and it was uh, made by Dominique Ropion, Anne Flippeau and Olivier Pouge who are the same team that brought us Paco Rabanne Invictus in 2013. Uh, I'm looking forward to trying this one because I've heard that it's comparable with Victor and Rolf Spice Bomb or uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier Ultramal, uh, the latter of which is a fragrance I really like and I bought for my stepson, um, but the former, I'm, I'm a fan of it, but I haven't been wearing it myself. There we go. And I let that dry so I don't get um, sort of alcohol aromas instead of the aromas themselves. Oh wow, okay. So the, the head is very, very fresh. Uh, it's very sort of aromatic and fruity. We've got uh, very fresh basil and sort of juniper berries, quite succulent juniper berries in there. But it's kind of bitter, uh, which I think is like cardamom, uh, cardamom, uh, which um, sort of adds a sort of bittersweet finish to it. It's got something quite fresh, but with a bitter ending. But there's like a, a citrusy part of it as well, which is like verbana. Uh, so we, we have um, sort of between the verbana and the uh, cardamom, something that is quite uh, citrusy, bittersweet, almost like a grapefruit accord. And then on the other side we have a very aromatic basil and very sweet fruity juniper. It's quite chloring, I don't think everyone's going to like this, but there is, um, you can really compare this to Victor Rolf's Spice Bomb, which is very similar in nature. So the dry down is really quick, already we're at um, where well, it's a leather accord, uh, which I feel is consists of uh, benzoin or benzoin. I'm not sure how it's pronounced in English. Uh, labdanum, it's quite musky labdanum, and the benzoin is quite balsamic. And then we've got some patchouli on the side as well. So the patchouli offers a um, how can I put it? Uh, sort of um, an earthy uh, floral side, whereas the um, Labdanum, which is quite musky, quite animally, and uh, the uh, benzoin, which is quite balsamic, kind of oily, uh, resinous, that kind of makes the leather. So we've got this kind of floral leather thing going on here. So I just cut because I was waiting to get to the base, and uh, here we are. So the patchouli's kind of left us, but we still have this leather accord, which consists of the benzoin and the um, labdanum. But we also seem to have uh, more. Uh, we have the kind of a fresh cedar wood, um, and it's kind. Of, this is a very woody, incense-based kind of oriental, but it's kind of leathery at the same time. It's quite spicy. So we have a bittersweet tonka bean, uh, tonka bean, which is like kumaha. Um, well, it's the same thing, but they're known by those names. So that's that's kind of bittersweet and earthy and musky and then we have myrrh uh, which is interesting because we had benzoin earlier so we've got another incense uh, but the myrrh is sort of more licorice uh, it's kind of sweet it's it's uh, enticing and it contrasts quite nicely with the leather and the tonka bean as well and the cedar wood adds this sort of element of freshness but it's very rounded it's very mellow it's very spicy uh, this is actually a woody spicy leather fragrance, so this is an interesting one. So in terms of seasonality, this fragrance uh, is very 
because it's very balsamic, it's very resinous, it's very incense. Uh, this is a, a fragrance that you would expect in the winter months, in the cold months, uh, because of its spiciness, because of all these, these sort of resinous elements in it. <clears throat> so this is something that perfectly fine to wear during autumn and winter. Uh, for spring, more or less wearable because we do have some aromatic herbs in there, so we have some basil and we have some patchouli. Would make it wearable, but it wouldn't make it perform quite as well. Um, but for summer, this one, maybe kind of a balmy summer night. Uh, so this one would be, you know, because as we'll talk later, it's quite a, a youthful fragrance. So maybe you could wear this on a, on a hot summer's night. It has something quite sensual about it. But I'd say that this is more of a winter fragrance. With regards to Burberry Brit Rhythm's Wake and Strength, uh, it's okay. Uh, it leaves a relatively decent trail behind the wearer. And in terms of projection, it gives you what you would expect. However, it's kind of let down in the longevity. This doesn't last very long at all. And in fact, it's very, very powerful when you first apply it and it dies down very quickly. And now I can smell it, but in a couple of hours time, there might be a trace of cedar wood or maybe a trace of one of the resins. But outside of that, you won't get much, um, which is a shame because it's so strong, you'd expect it to last longer. But I guess the candle that burns twice as bright burns half as long, but uh, it's a shame. In terms of Burberry Brick Rhythm's third party feedback, this kind of oscillates between two camps. We have one side that's saying this is really sexy and leathery and they really like it and they think it's great to wear or great to smell. Uh, there are some well, younger women tend to prefer this than older women uh, when it comes to men as well. I think this is more on the younger scale in terms of feedback. Um, but there was another side that compared it to bubblegum, they said it was really sweet, it smells synthetic, a bit rubbery. I, I can see where this is coming from, but I don't think that that's uh, a huge issue with this fragrance. Nevertheless, uh, those are the two perspectives on this fragrance. Um, but on the whole, people tended to like it, and they compared it favorably with Spice Bomb rather than uh, seeing it as a copycat. So let's talk about the impressions. As I mentioned several times earlier, this is quite a youthful fragrance. This is something that I felt, in terms of attraction and wearability, is more for a younger demographic. Um, this kind of reminds me of uh, Spice Bomb, and Spice Bomb is quite a youthful fragrance, but it can be worn by a more mature audience, just like the uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier's Ultramal, which is something that can be worn by younger guys, but is also targeted towards people that are ever so slightly older. For example, I gave Ultramal to my stepson, and he absolutely loves it. Uh, this is something that I could perfectly imagine him wearing as well. And my stepson, he's a teenager, um, and so he fits quite well in this demographic I'm talking about. This is something that you wouldn't wear to the office or formally as an older man. In fact, it would even be hard to imagine wearing this uh, on a night out or at a barbecue. But if you're under your 20s, I could see this being an ideal fragrance. One to wear around high school, one to wear on uh, evenings out, hanging with friends. Or, you know, you're starting to get interested in girls, so maybe having a coffee or going to the movies or whatever kids do these days. Um, in terms of time of day, now this is kind of paradoxical, uh, paradoxical, paradoxical, tell me in the comments which one it is. Uh, this is more of a nighttime fragrance, so if you're a young guy, probably out less at night, or at least I hope so, uh, my stepson definitely is not out at night yet, um, but this could probably be worn fine during the day uh, as well. Uh, as I touched on a second ago, in terms of occasion, this is a much more casual fragrance. This is something that you wouldn't wear for a big event or when going out uh, for a formal event, but you could wear it like chilling out with friends, you know, doing your, your daily errands, or um, if you're just uh, going to see 
for maybe a romantic encounter this will be fine as long as you're in that younger demographic. Uh, finally, in terms of masculinity, I think this is on the conventionally faint side, which means that it's a fragrance that is very modern, it's quite uh, welcoming, it's not intimidating to wear, it's not like Aramis, which is probably the polar opposite of this, uh, which still has leathery accords in it, but is just so masculine, so mature, that it would be terrifying for somebody who would be happy wearing this. Finally, let's talk about the presentation. Uh, in terms of style, this has a very uh, very strong identity. It's uh, very reminiscent of Burberry as a brand and is great for welcoming younger audiences and uh, potential future clients. Um, the bottle is an interesting design. It features sort of this, this uh, classic Burberry uh, check that uh, we're all familiar with, but in a black blown glass style. Um, one thing I found a bit weird with this bottle is that it is trying to go for this very geometric design, um, but it, it feels sort of wonky to the touch. Maybe this was an intentional approach for it to have sort of a handmade effect to it, but it, it is kind of confusing because you want something that's precise, geometric and stylish, but then you want something that's craft, handmade and independent. They're, they're two polar opposites, so it kind of feels um, inconsistent in that regard. Uh, nevertheless, it's kind of stylish to have on your uh, shelf or uh, in a cabinet. Uh, one thing I didn't like is this acrylic lid. Uh, it's sort of meant to be sort of a smoke glass finish. It kind of feels like an afterthought on this bottle. Uh, the edges are sharp, it's very uncomfortable, and it's basically sort of dark and acrylic. Uh, and then when it comes to the atomizer, uh, it seems to perform okay, it's a bit strong for my taste, it's like really powerful, uh, not a water gun, but very thick, um, which is a shame, I prefer them when they're sort of more of a mist, uh, but what I think is a nice touch is that you have engraved on the top, just underneath the atomizer, is Burberry Brit Rhythm, uh, instead of featuring the brand, you know, on the bottle instead. In terms of patch packaging, uh, we have this sort of matte cardboard with occasionally a glossy finish. Uh, we have the same sort of check effect here, uh, the sort of Burberry brick rhythm in silver and the silhouette of the bottle on the other side. Um, the cardboard is not of a quality that is particularly luxurious, but it's uh, perfectly, um, uh, perfectly functional. Uh, finally, in terms of value for money, now this is where Burberry Brit Rhythm excels compared to its um, competitors that are much more expensive. This is actually uh, can be found for around $26 uh, per 100 milliliters, 3.4 uh, ounces. In fact, you can buy a, I think it's a three ounce, uh, yeah, a three ounce bottle, 90 milliliters for as little as $25. Now, I haven't seen them really available at 100 millimeter, uh, milliliters, um, 3.4 ounces, but it tends to be in 90, which is three ounces. Uh, and yeah, that's for as little as $25. If you check the link below, uh, that will take you straight to it. Burberry Brit Rhythm is an excellent fragrance for the younger man. And uh, if you're looking to buy a fragrance for your son, nephew, or godson, uh, a young lad, this is an excellent starting fragrance. It's very outgoing, it's very leathery, it's very stylish, uh, and it's quite a forward fashion and designer brand. If you're an older man, this is probably less suited to your taste. Uh, I imagine that you'd probably be looking for something a little bit more refined on a higher price tag. Uh, for instance, uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier Ultramal or Victor Ross Spice Bomb or even uh, Dunhill Icon which we reviewed not long ago. My name is Charles Philippe, that's all from me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure you smash those like and subscribe buttons, we'd really appreciate it. And please give us a comment, let us know what you thought of this video, if your thoughts differ, if there's any requests you have or any questions, we look forward to hearing from you. And don't forget, if you look in the description below, you'll find that we have Facebook, Instagram and Twitter Give us a like and a follow on those so you can stay in touch and see our new updates. Until next time, take care.